In this video, I'm gonna be talking about overcast light for bird photography, what the advantages are, and if you're not using it already, why I think you should. Welcome to part three of this mini series on lighting in bird photography. Part one was all about using sunlight with the sun behind you. Part two was all about backlighting, shooting into the sun. And this part is all about using overcast lighting, which is completely the opposite of the first two videos. So what do I mean by overcast lighting? Well, today is pretty much perfect for making this video because it is very overcast. And really it just means shooting under some degree of cloud. So in the first two videos, I was talking about shooting when the sun is quite bright so the, the sky is clear uh, with overcast conditions you're shooting when there's a fair amount of cloud around and what that means is you just get much more even lighting so if it's a clear sky you're only going to get your light from one direction there's nothing to diffuse it when it's very cloudy as it is today you almost don't know where the sun is coming from i know where the sun is because i know my position uh, but if i didn't i wouldn't know where the sun is at the moment so today is perfect and this is what you want to look for for overcast lighting is to get an even layer of cloud this is just the best conditions for doing this is to get an even blanket of cloud across the sky how does overcast light affect our images well it really is very different to shooting in bright sunlight as in the first two videos because we've got this even layer of cloud it gives a much softer appeal a uh, much softer look to the images also because you've got less contrast it means you've got less highlights and less shadows that can be really good for exposure it can make it easier to expose because you don't have quite that uh, exposure value from the darkest areas to the lightest areas and also you can pretty much shoot in any direction because you don't have a strong light source from one direction uh, you could pretty much do a complete 180 degrees and shoot in the opposite direction and it probably wouldn't look too different so there's quite a few advantages of overcast lighting one of the disadvantages of course is that you're going to have lower light levels so that simply means that you're going to have to do something with your exposure uh, you're either going to have to use a wider aperture uh, a slower shutter speed or a higher ISO to get the exposure that you're after so it's not as easy in terms of exposure as shooting in bright sunlight for bird photography, I think that overcast lighting can really bring out the detail in the feathers. Sometimes I think it actually looks better in softer lighting than it does in bright sunlight. So that's one of the things I love is just how it can bring out the feather detail, particularly in birds that have a lot of detail to begin with. I think it can really enhance that. When we're shooting birds that are very light or very dark in tone, this can be a problem for getting detail, for getting the right look to your image and for getting the exposure correct. Again, if we shoot under overcast conditions, under cloudy skies, with that softer contrast, it's much easier to get an accurate exposure and to record that detail. I find it's particularly useful if we're photographing birds that are actually black and white. This image here is of two razorbills photographed at Benton Cliffs on the East Yorkshire coast. Now, if I was to have photographed this in bright sunlight, it would have just been much more difficult. It would have been really difficult to adjust the exposure, make sure I didn't blow out the whites. Photographing under a cloudy sky that day made it much easier to record the whites and the blacks to get a nice even exposure. I'd mentioned about the shooting direction in overcast light. This example here is of a young peregrine falcon that's recently fledged the nest. At this location, where I'm shooting here, if the sun had been out, it would have been very, very difficult. It would have been kind of side lit, very, very difficult to judge the exposure wouldn't have been able to get a pleasing shot and get that feather detail but with the overcast conditions really didn't matter on the direction of shooting so I was able to shoot as it was and get some lovely detail in the backs of those beautiful feathers Something I think is not talked about too often in terms of overcast lighting is actually the effect it can have on the background. So it can make a massive difference to your background. A lot of people don't realize this. So if you're shooting in bright sunlight, because again, as we talked about earlier, you've got more contrast. That means you've got more shadows, more highlights. That's gonna give potentially more of a messy background and it can increase the noise in your images as well as the noisy plane goes overhead. If you were to shoot from exactly the same position with the same background, but you do it on a day where the lighting is overcast, then you'll find the background looks completely different. It should go much softer. So in this example here, uh, I've got two images to show you to compare. The first image is of a great tit, and this is taken from a feeding station. And you can see here that the background, because it's taken in bright sunlight, the background is looking quite messy. It's much messier than I would personally prefer. A dappled effect is okay, but here, here I think it's a bit too much. So because you've got bright sunlight, lots more contrast, messier background, it's also in increasing the noise. We've got more noise in the image as well. In contrast, this picture of a robin, this is 
the same perch with virtually the same shooting angle, same background, but it's shot on a day where I've got even cloud cover. It lowers the contrast and you can see the difference. The background goes so much smoother, much, much more pleasing to me. And it also takes out some of the noise there as well. And this kind of leads me on to the next point, which is shooting in woodlands. If you do this in bright sunlight, you just, because you've got so much contrast, again, you're going to have highlight areas, shadow areas. It's going to be really uneven, really difficult to get an exposure. And yes, it is possible to do, and you maybe could wait for a shaft of sunlight in a certain place, maybe use a bit of filling flash. But I find it's much easier if you just wait for an overcast day to do your shooting in the woodland. This image here of a sparrowhawk was taken in Serbia. Uh, we were just waiting for it to come down to the reflection pool. And here the lighting is just so even. So there's, again, no shadows, no highlights. Exposure is simpler, making it easier to record the detail in the bird's feathers. Absolutely beautiful sparrowhawk. So with woodland, I would certainly try and shoot on an overcast day. I just try and take advantage of the increase in ISO capability of cameras over the years. I think it's also worth mentioning that overcast lighting might actually give you the kind of atmosphere that you're after in, in your image. You might not want bright sunlight. In this image here of a white-tailed eagle taken in Poland, it was a really, really overcast morning when I took this. Um, but to me, it just summed up the atmosphere. It summed up the location, the wildness of it. And these kind of images where they're kind of a bit dark, dank, they, they can just actually work better rather than a really nice brightly lit image. So don't think you always need to use bright sunlight. Overcast lighting sometimes might give you more atmosphere in the image. There are two more videos all about lighting in bird photography. I'll put them in the description box below and you can find all three videos, all three videos on a playlist on my channel. Uh, if you want to learn more about bird photography, then check out the link to this video up here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.